currently I'm still a student, but I, an IT student. Okay. Uh, I still school and I am still developing my skills in artificial intelligence and data science and okay. some part of in cyber security. Oh okay. Yeah. So what are you so, expecting from this session? All right. Um first of all I'm expecting to know more on how to build my skills and at the same time explore in the field of IT like to know more and at the same time to meet people in order to increase my ideas okay. and capabilities yeah okay, okay. no problem i wish you the best of the conference yeah thank you very much thank you thank you okay so i believe our speakers are joining us now uh okay i have to leave i Hey. Okay. Hello. Hey, hey, everybody. Okay, so. Hey guys, you guys are live already, so you can go ahead, please. <laughs> Excellent. Hi. You can hear you Hi, everyone. Uh, hi. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm good. How is everyone? I'm great. Hello. Hi, good morning. Good morning. So, I'm so happy to have you both today uh, on this panel. I believe that uh, we already present. That I believe that someone at Checkpoint uh, has already presented uh, both Wiza, Jalakasi, and uh, Oluwatobi Atukiti and myself. So um, thank you so much for joining the. Yes, thank you so much for joining the Checkpoint Build uh, Africa. Um, today we will talk about uh, technology, we will talk about how to build uh, an African product uh, in Africa. Uh, we'll talk about technology and progress, we'll talk about the disconnection between the solution and the market because sometimes um, when we build we are somehow growing ideas from somewhere else where it's so important to focus on the customer and the market. This session will really help us drive the audience and really focus on what kind of approach uh, you should you should follow when you're designing a product to suit the market, to suit the local market in which you are targeting. Um, how can we come with a product blueprint uh, for the African market in which, in a way, it will align with your local market and the people that you serve? And it's important for your product to resonate with them. Uh, so the first question that we are um, going to ask to our panelists today is uh, what does building products with African design mean to you? What does it mean for Flutterwave or Luwatobi, for example, and for Hover Developer Services Wiza? What does it mean um, to building African product with African design to you? Hmm. Okay. It's not a light question. <laughs> but you're gonna like ask us, you know, how we're doing, how the weather in Nairobi, you know, those type of question. <laughs> but yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I think for me, it starts with really like uh, understanding your consumer uh, and their behavior and their expectations. So um, building a product with African design has to really empathize with the reality of the consumer um, and what their like needs are. So like at Hover, we build tools for um, developers in emerging markets to integrate with financial services infrastructure around them. And, and it's very popular in Africa because a lot of our financial services infrastructure um, runs on top of mobile. So like here in Kenya, uh, where I live, we have uh, Safaricom and Tessa. Um, in Nigeria, there's a lot of um, banks and fintech products and USSD uh, penetration. So I think that the first thing is just really like understanding um, the reality of your consumer and building tools that like serve them. Um, there are no other uh, companies that are building uh, utilities to integrate to USSD infrastructure in this way because uh, in many other parts of the world, 
USSD infrastructure isn't a thing. Um, and there's a way that you can look at that and frame it as, you know, maybe like a weakness. It's like, ah, smartphone penetration in Africa is low, so they don't have smartphones. But then we mm -hmm. see that and see like, oh, this is actually how people use phones. Maybe they don't want to use smartphones. So we try to incorporate um, our product philosophy as, as uh, technology entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to serve those needs. I think like that's one of the most important thing. Um, the second thing I think is around like, uh, how do people pay? Um, the paying paying behavior. If I launch a service today, and I now want to charge people uh, one thousand naira per day for using that service, <laughs> I'm not sure how mm -hmm. successful it's going to be, because maybe yes. the consumer behavior around like paying for subscription products is not um, is not quite there yet. But if you now break it down into like you know piecemeal, say like okay, pay pay two thousand naira every thirty days for X Y Z service, then maybe um, that can. Uh, easily suit the, the pockets of the people that we're targeting. There's a reason why Spotify doesn't collect Naira. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. There's a reason why Spotify doesn't co collect shillings. And, uh, you know, those are, I think, the, the two main considerations. And I'll just pause there um, and hear from Molua Tobi, who you know, actually works in a payment company, so she's a better place than me. Yes, go, uh, your turn. Go ahead, Molua Tobi. Yeah, so so you, um, that's an interesting question. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to chime on what um, Lisa said. So what um, building products for Africa mean to us at Total Wind is that, so first of all, I hope you all know that in Africa today, according to UNN, we have about 54 countries, right? So it means that how do we build products for 54 countries? You know? And what Total Wave has done, um, which I would say that we've been true to our mission from the very beginning, is to make payments easy um, across all African countries. Countries. So we built payment infrastructures that allows individuals and businesses to scale their businesses. You know, so um, one of our partners, which is Uber, you know, the reason why they could scale to the African countries they exist today is because they've been able to leverage Flutterwave's um, payment infrastructure. You know, so it's also taking into cognizance like the different cultural nuances in the 54 countries. You know, so it's mm -hmm. a very tough business you know and at first we you know we love to solve like these hard problems because we know that hard problems are, are rewarding you know so this is just like an addition to what um wizard said you know thinking about the different critical for countries you know and how we can help businesses to quickly scale you know mm -hmm. so before that we existed it would have been very hard for you know organizations who were interested in cross-border solutions to scale right but right now, if you want to create maybe like a cross-border solution, you can always leverage on Flutterway's payment infrastructure because we've already done that hard work. You mm -hmm. know, we have presence in over 20 countries. And what that also means is that um, different currencies that exist in this country can be accepted as mm -hmm. well because of Flutterway. Yeah. So as we talk about uh, currency and knowing that we have 54 countries, how do we... Like in this building uh, in African, uh, in Africa, do we also serve the different languages? Because I know that the tech ecosystem in Africa is very dominated by the Anglophone speaking country. I'm, for example, I'm from Cameroon and I'm a, fr I'm a French speaker. So do your products serve the French speaker or the Lusophone? Or are we still really still targeting the, ang the English languages and using it as a lingua franca? No, so, so, so not at all. So we have the multilingual um, support that we give to the different countries where we operate mm -hmm. today. So as you said, Anglophone countries, um, West African, East African, you know, because where's the point of building a product when someone in Kenya, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't know how to use the product? Um, Kenya shillings, for example, why do I need to, like, I want to make payments using my Kenyan shillings and not dollars, for mm -hmm. example. You know, so we should be able to speak like, their languages, the currencies that exist there, and um, yes, yeah, so that adoption of your products can grow fast, you know, and it actually does help to solve their need because why is the use again of a product if it doesn't help you to solve your need? And it doesn't have to be complicated, it could be very simple. Mm -hmm. You know, you also need to understand that countries differ, the financial service services in South Africa is very different from what exists in Morocco, it's different from what exists in Kenya. You know, I've been to Kenya, I've been to Kigali, I've been to Uganda. You know, it's just really different, you know, and I live in Nigeria. So mm -hmm. you need to understand all of the, um, yes, 
all of those cultural nuances you know before you can say this is how we want to build for this country so that the adoption can grow you know mm -hmm. and can truly really solve their problem okay yeah so adding to that if i may mm -hmm. I, I do think like uh, the Francophone Africa region is one of the more profitable um, on the continent that a lot of people in the industry are not paying attention to because of the language barrier. Um, mm -hmm. At Hover, one of our biggest users runs a, a mobile money uh, interface app in DRC. DRC mm -hmm. is a huge, huge market um, in mm -hmm. Africa in the top three. Um, if you're able to get to the type of scale um, that you can achieve in DRC, um, that's easy, a multi-million dollar business. But uh, mm -hmm. I think some uh, people from Anglophone countries, uh, maybe because of the cultural difference and the language barrier, I, I always sense that there's a bit of hesitance or fear to get into those markets. But I actually think mm -hmm. that's where the real opportunity is. And um, it would be nice to see more integration of Francophone and Anglophone Africa because the mm -hmm. cultures are both very vibrant and um, uh, it's not a fight. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because... When we look at uh, Apple and iOS, uh, uh, Apple and when they opened the last iOS store to reach, I think was the trillion user or the billion user uh, to be the number one uh, uh, product with, to reach that level, they opened up to I believe uh, uh, over 20 countries, and out of those 20 countries, uh, half of the country were actually French francophone countries, and they were actually all of the Francophone countries in Africa, Cameroon was included, Cote d'Ivoire was included, and us Francophone we were always like, wow, so it means that all this time um, in Africa, it wasn't really possible on building a product uh, using um, uh, and be able to have it on iOS because it wasn't available to your point, Wiza. So I think uh, now that the big, like Apple, you know, has arrived and things like that. I think I hopefully will change this perception that, you know, it's very easy to build. It's just a, a language barrier. And I really wanted to tackle that. And that's, and that for me, that that's the breaking, the breaking of the ice. Um, the next question that I have here uh, is, uh, what are some considerations we should keep in mind when building for Africa? And I think we kind of covered that. And if there's anything, maybe at this point, that you feel like you want to add, Wiza or Uluwatobi, we, we spoke about the language barrier. We spoke about building a fintech solution and ensuring that um, it covered the multiple currency that we have in the 54 country. What are some other considerations we should also keep in mind when building for Africa? Yeah. Uh I think it's important for, for people to understand that the, the market, when you're describing the market, um, you're describing Africa as a whole market, but mm -hmm. uh, administratively and operationally, each country is its own animal. So mm -hmm. like you need to treat it with the respect that it deserves. So, you know, if you built your, your, your business in Nigeria and it's working very well, don't think you're just going to come wake up in the morning, copy and paste that business in Ethiopia mm -hmm. and expect it to work the same way. Like it's not, it doesn't work that way. These countries exactly. are very different. And you know, there's sometimes, because we always talk about Africa as this um, singular monolithic entity, uh, it's, 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 it's easy to conflate uh, and believe that even when you're doing the actual administration and operations of the business, it's going to be the same. Each country mm -hmm. has got different uh, regulatory environment for running a business. Uh, if you want to incorporate a business in, in Zambia, you need to have a resident director who's a shareholder. If you mm -hmm. want to incorporate a business in Cote d'Ivoire, you can do it electronically online and have it wholly owned as a foreign mm -hmm. subsidiary of your parent's company. And mm -hmm. these are like considerations for somebody to make ahead of time and know and prepare adequately because expanding into the rest of the continent is not easy. Um, mm -hmm. You can think that, ah, my thing is working in Nigeria for like 10 million users. I made it. Oh, God. <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> you land in Nairobi and you realize like, hey, it's a, it's a whole different ballgame. So I think that's an important consideration. And also, like, people need to pay attention to understanding the employment law when they're hiring people in these countries. Mm -hmm. You need to understand the local employment law. In some countries, you cannot just give somebody 1,000 USD salary and it's okay. You need to pay for their house. You need to pay for their car to pay for their spouse's mm -hmm. medical insurance. These are things that people need to consider. And um, I, I've learned the, those lessons the hard way. So I always try and share to prepare people. But I think it's important for people to try to build Pan-African businesses with all this in mind. Okay. Uh, Eduardo, do, do you have anything to add? No, no. I think you can move on. Yeah. Okay. okay, perfect. Thank oh, you so sorry. much. Um, yeah. You, is this another question? Because I think I dropped off at some point. Um, oh, well, it was, 
No, it's the next question, but we're kind of building on top of it oh. and say that what can we, so basically what we spoke about right now is what are some considerations we should keep in mind when building for Africa mm -hmm. and uh, so basically it's like if there's anything that you feel like, because I feel like the first question we kind of cover a lot of different topics and these topics uh, basically we just uh, talk about to look at the employment law in each of the country that is really, especially as you want to expand, that is really important to know that even in, in, in Nigeria with the Kama 2020, we just have a webinar session around that, that this is different okay. law that we need to be aware of, especially when we're trying to expand. And, and I think that's also a, a uh, one of the challenges in building product because uh, to your point with uh, Wiza was talking about how in Kenya uh, in uh, Tanzania there's a way that you can do uh, do it online with one shareholder but I don't think that in every African country we have this ability to even um, register the company online and I know that with the Kama 2020 is now allowing uh, Nigerians uh, to, to, in order to do that if, if so if you want to comment on that all right yeah yes yeah, so, 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 so I can do that um, so yeah. you know as you scale your business, in fact, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know about Brainia School. It actually talks about partnership is very important to scale your business. So as organizations, you should be very open to partnerships. You know, partnerships mm -hmm. locally, partnerships globally, you know, um, so that you can scale your business fast. Um, the other one I'll talk about is regulatory policies. I think that is very key as well. You know, um, case in point is that the financial regulatory system in Nigeria is very different from Kenya. You know, mm -hmm. MPESA, for example, is it has like a very strong mobile money um, wallet. Like it's really strong on like Nigeria here, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So you also want to take into consideration like the regulatory policies, you know, mm -hmm. and you want to carry out like research investment. Um, yeah, you want to carry out like research in, in, research in the different countries. Um, as mm -hmm. well, yes, yeah, so be open to partnerships and then secondly, the regulatory policies as well, you know, so you mm -hmm. don't come into the country and then you lose money with the assumptions, you, know, you carry some assumptions from the other country where you expanded into, into a new country, you know, mm -hmm. I think the end thereof for you might be um, failure or loss, yeah. Perfect, thank you so much. So. That question kind of kind of cover everything from uh, cultural barrier to language barrier uh, to employment uh, to uh, employment law and to really uh, build, making a lot of research and development uh, in the grant in Africa uh, in the country before doing that. Which kind of bring us to the next question? As we are currently in pandemic, I think. Uh, during this pandemic moment, there's a lot of things that uh, we were taught. There's a lot of things that we, we thought that we'll never be able to do. Uh, so one of the questions that uh, I was kind of thinking about was, you know, do product team really need to be on the ground to build product that solve real problems for Africans? Well, I'd like to just tack on that because I'm almost at the airport security checkpoint and I have to drop off. Um, okay. I think so. I think so. I think it's really important because when you're building... Um, for the continent, uh, you need to do a lot of like user research, and that user research requires empathy. And one of the best ways to get that empathy is mm -hmm. to actually just spend time with the people. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of Hover, we're a distributed team with half the team on the continent, and then the other half um, in in uh, North America. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, sometimes creates a little bit of friction in translating the requirements of the users into like product. But we've been able to mitigate that with um, adequate travel. Like here in Kenya, for example, we've had international travel open since the start of August, and I think many other African countries are trending in this way. But it's, it, I think it is very important to have people on the ground, even if your whole team isn't there. Um, you can't, like, if I start today trying to design a product for Japan, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to succeed because I'm not there. Um, and that's my personal view. Um, and yeah, as, you're about to go, as you're about to go, Wiza, I think Oluwatobi wouldn't mind. I'm just going to ask you another question, and I will go, me and Oluwatobi, we're just going to do one-on-one, -on -one and we'll be finishing sure. the question before you go. So then the audience has the time to get all of the, all of your smart, nice, you know, <laughs> before you hop on the, the plane, wow, you know. Wow, wow. <laughs> So there's, so many, <laughs> there's so many fintech solutions, yet we've not even captured 50% of the population. From a product design mm -hmm. perspective, especially knowing that Hoover is into a distributed uh, area, what are frameworks, tools, and platforms we can use to reach more people? Please enlighten us. 
All right, I am at the checkpoint, so I'm going to be arrested. But uh, the internet, the internet is your friend. Uh, the internet, internet is your friend. Google like, is your friend. That's, that's what, <laughs> yeah, the internet is your friend. So it's important to leverage that to the extent that you can. Yeah. Um, just use the internet. People are consuming social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, etc. All these things are very powerful. I'm sorry, guys. I have to go. No um, worries. Goodbye. Well, thank you for stopping right. by and uh, hop thank on you. your jet thank and uh, you. see you later. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, yes, that. I, I love this live. You know, I love this live. You know, people are doing their thing. You know, is hoping on the jet. You know, you're live. You know, so. <laughs> so let's yeah. just check our tea and, <laughs> and continue our conversation. And this is just going to be a one on one. Uh, and I think for even that, I will have even a one special question for you since you're here. Um, so I think uh, to this question, um, there are so many fintech solutions. And if you also want to comment on the other one, the product team needs to be on the ground to build products that solve real problems for Africans. What do you think about this question? Yes, yeah, so best practice is that mm -hmm. the product team should be on the ground. Um, mm -hmm. Either your product manager, maybe, or the engineering team, but, you know, it's important that somebody is on the ground to... So in product mm -hmm. management, you have, like, the product discovery, and you have the product mm -hmm. development. Product discovery mm -hmm. is you thinking through what it is that you want to build for your users, you know, and there are different mm -hmm. ways to um, think through, like, um, how do you build for your, for your users? You know, there is the interviews, which is one-on-one, -on -one, they are sending out surveys, you know, and in trying to understand, like, your users, because you are building for them, you know, sometimes surveys aren't enough. You have qualitative mm -hmm. data, you have quantitative data, you know. Sometimes you just want to observe, you know, you mm -hmm. want to observe that market, you want to observe that area, you want to observe the culture, so that when you are building, you are, you are taking all of that into consideration. Um, you know, in fact, in the year 2016, when Mark Zuckerberg came to Nigeria and Kenya, it was for a reason, you know. Mm -hmm. When Jack Dorsey came to Ni Nigeria, that was last year, it was for a reason, you know. So mm -hmm. there is that element, somebody in the team coming to check, you know, the geographical location, just to, you know, check the market, um, even, like, even in terms of, like, development as well. Um, so I, I have even like a personal um, experience, and this is like a very simple example. So there was a meeting room application that I had built in mm -hmm. my former place of um, employment, you know, and the meeting room application was used across all our offices. So we had offices in Nigeria, in New York, in Kenya, in Uganda, in Kigali, you know. And even though, yes, I had like other colleagues who were engineers in these different locations, mm -hmm. you know. So the meeting room... Um, application was installed in an Android tablet. Now that tablet mm -hmm. is supposed to be installed in front of the meeting room door. Mm -hmm. You know, such that when you're coming into a meeting room, you can check in mm -hmm. you know, from the tablet. You know, and then we had rolled out and then and even though yes I was doing all of the follow up, it was only until after I visited Uganda that I then realized that mm -hmm. the tablet in Uganda were inside the meeting room. Oh. <laughs> and what is of the door, Ooh, you know, it changed yeah, everything. So, yeah, so you see, so if I did not visit, I would not have known that, even though, yeah. yes, I was following closely, you know. So, mm -hmm. there is that ideal like product team should be on ground, however, because of COVID, it's important that you know, at least mm -hmm. have somebody who is local to that place who you can mm -hmm. trust, exactly, and help you carry out these things, and then the person can mm -hmm. give you feedback just the way you want it, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so, that that's the first one. Um, so your second question has to do with, oh, we have like so many fintech solutions and exactly. went over our needs are still not met. Yeah, it's, they are still not met because, you know, we know what Maslow's hierarchy of needs is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there mm -hmm. are some fundamental needs of humans that you need to solve for first. You mm -hmm. know, when you're talking about tech solutions, does the person have food to eat? Yes. You know, can mm -hmm. the person wreck their head somewhere? You know, do they have clothes to wear? You know, mm -hmm. it's like building a digital app. Mm -hmm. She would not see. She jumped uh, off. She's coming oh, back. Yes. Okay. My chair. Go back. <laughs> All right. Okay. I dropped. Oh, sorry. It's raining here. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's raining here. So, so mm -hmm. I was talking about master's hierarchy of needs, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. how do you build a digital app for somebody who is hungry? How do you build a digital app for somebody who doesn't even have like a place exactly. to rest their heads, you know? Mm -hmm. So, 
and we have like quite a large percentage of people in Africa who are poor. You know, they cannot mm -hmm. afford it. So if you are building solutions, you need to know that the solution you are building actually solves their problem. You know, exactly. Um, and yeah, so it's not everybody that can afford to log mm -hmm. into an app. It's not everybody that is technical savvy. Exactly. So, um, I remember that there was one solution that we were building for truck drivers in the northern mm -hmm. states. You know, mm -hmm. they had built a mobile application. And the mm -hmm. drivers, the truck drivers, were not using the application. Why? Yes. Because like I cannot operate it. So we eventually we had to do USSD. You know where they mm -hmm. just dial the code, and then they can give us status of the goods that they were moving. So when mm -hmm. they arrive at a customer's location, they dial that code. When they offload the goods, they dial that code. You know. Exactly. So it means that we already wasted time building mm -hmm. the mobile application. You know. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and I like and I like how you touch point on the master pyramid of needs because even for us at Africa Hacks, when we're building our product, our main customer it's not necessarily the people that are working, it's not necessarily the truck drivers, but our main customer are the sixty percent population in Africa, which are the youths. And to your point, when you look at the youth and you look at the the pyramid of needs, you will see that our youth are actually the one that's at the bottom of that pyramid of needs because some of the, part of them, like, like almost, like, you know, 60% of them, you know, are actually uh, need real needs such as food, uh, electricity, power, and energy. So for us, when we're building it, we're like, oh, wow, we need to find a way. So that's kind of how we decided to become like a social enterprise because we need to find a ways in as we build to give back to our customer to ensure that before they get to use our product, they can actually get some things to make them feel, to make them kind of increase the needs and then they can now create this an envy to create now tech solution and do all of those different things because what would I want to create to your point what would I want to create a tech solution if I cannot even have electricity in my home or if I cannot even have uh, something to eat that day, right? So I think that I like that. And I think this is even the reason why we have this conversation to really uh, talk to people like, yes, it's great to build a product with African design. You're mute, yeah, you're mute. You have 1.2 billion people in Africa. You that know? doesn't mean that 1.2 billion people would use your application. <laughs> you know, and then you just see all of those apps starting. This, 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 but like, is your app solving nutrition? Is your app solving something that you know you can start tapping to that to now expand? But you want to expand all of this because they don't understand that you know, um, product like such a flutter wave is there to answer a critical need, and that need is already in, better in the market. But the idea that we have, hi. Hi, hi guys. Uh, interesting conversation. Don't worry, just ignore me. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> We're like, are we running out of time? So I think we oh, no. like, and I think you don't, you don't like the good moment. You don't like the good moment because I feel like this is really the reason why we even have this topic building product with African design. Yeah. <laughs> because a lot of people will just copy paste the app and just like, hey, this is an app, but to your point. How am I gonna use this app? Like, do you even know my day to day, my routine? So I really love this conversation, uh, as mm -hmm. you can see. So we move to the next question. Unless okay, I do, so, like, uh, guys, app. because of time, uh, yes. actually, because of time, we I think we should take one or two okay. questions from the audience. So, okay. uh, people, uh, so uh, from the audience, please raise your hand. Raise your hand. I will invite you to join us now. Uh, I will invite you to join us in the audience please go to the option to raise your hand there's an option to raise your hand there uh but you guys can continue until i invite the person okay please. no worries so should i continue another question or should we just continue chatting with this last I think question we, we have people raising their hands already we have people raising their hands so let's okay, invite perfect. them and so we are having a mini k Olome, I think you should be joining us now. Okay. Um, or maybe they want to type it. Oh, I believe it should be joining. <laughs> yes, there are actually questions for you in the uh, discussion board already. Okay. But now we have a minute. Let's take this, then we go. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. 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 Hi, Minike. Hi, Minike. Hi. So I have a really quick question. Like, okay, it's okay. It's cool building. Um, there are a lot of, there are a lot of young people building um solutions for Africa, like day to day. Like, I, 
I'm currently um, working on a transportation company that solves that reduces um, the cost of transportation for Africans. Like basically, um, currently with the COVID uh, pandemic, the prices of um, transportation has gone really high. So something that you usually in Lagos you usually go for, say three hundred, uh, you're, you're paying like six hundred now. So, but the problem is. Why creating um, such solution is really hard for first-time founders to uh, um, actually get their product to the market. So I, I don't know if there's uh, any recommendation on how it, it could be. I think we're having issues with this camera. We is having issues with this network. No, I can hear you clearly. I think okay, I, I, I can hear you clearly. I can hear me, I, We can hear me clearly. No, we can hear. Uh, I think the one that is on your end, maybe. Can I can I continue? Oh, okay. Yes, you can continue. Yes, please yes, proceed. Oh, okay, so how how do while building um, a product for Africa that solves a real a real problem, how mm -hmm. do um, say first time founder because I I would I would want to be biased like um, civil entrepreneurs. It's easy for them to launch their product and it's out there. For, for first-time founders, and I know a lot of first-time founders are here, how do you get your product out to the market? So I think now right, you're, so, it's back. So go ahead, yeah. I'm just going to... All right. Okay, cool. So that's like a great question. So what I hear you say is like, how do I launch my product? You know, mm -hmm. how do I get my product into the hands of people? So, you know, there are different ways. There is the online way, and then there is the offline way. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so there is the online way and there is the offline way. So the online way is, you know, and where awareness on social media, awareness on Google mm -hmm. search, you know, um, mm -hmm. implementing SEOs for implementing SEO for your products, you know, um, mm -hmm. you are promoting your 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 product or your service online, or mm -hmm. you are leveraging influencers who help you to spread the news you know and you know and we, I, in fact recently i've seen that you know influencers have been doing like a really great job especially i said yeah. there's one influencer that i know that if you use that influencer you can be almost sure of like 200 app downloads you know um mm -hmm. so that's like the online version and now there's the offline version which actually requires leg work you know so you might then need to work with like a very large number of people you know who does like this door-to-door -door, um interactions for you so i know i know that okay did something around that you know so you may maybe want to leverage billboards as well although sometimes billboards you really cannot uh, measure the success mm -hmm. of them but depending on the location as well so those are like the two ways that you would want to try and then I, another thing that i would advise is that you also reach out people who have done something very similar mm -hmm. you know there is no um yeah, so and there's really nothing wrong with you sending somebody a message on LinkedIn to say, mm -hmm. you know, I see that you succeeded in this thing. And I want us to be very realistic here because sometimes when I'm stuck on something, I reach out. You know, mm -hmm. I don't ever feel like you reaching out. People would think, oh, you're not smart enough or you're a developer, I thought you were smarter. No, mm -hmm. reach out to people who have succeeded in these things and ask them. And I'm sure that they'll be happy to help. You know, this Africa ecosystem, what I've seen is that we mm -hmm. actually do not help one another. Exactly. And so I feel like you should level. Yeah, And I feel like it's really joining the theme of building product in African design because, to your point, this African design is always uh, around the collaboration. And the, there's this perception, yeah. whether it's in tech, in all different industry, that um, African we don't come together. And I think that in doing that, in doing your research, to your point, in uh, uh, you know, linking up with someone on LinkedIn about, uh, you know, about like, oh, I'm doing the same thing, let's connect, because this is kind of actually the best way to have your product in front of people that actually you will use it, because they'll be like, oh, wow, this is something that we don't really have, and as a matter of fact, what you're doing is a bit dif simil uh, different than us. Yes, it's similar, because it's the same industry, but you're actually answering a challenge that we do we're not answering. Let's help each other, also push this on your end, and see how we can mutually benefit from each other. Okay, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. That was an interesting conversation. Thank you. We believe that we are going to build amazing products on the continent. Yes, yes, and it's yes. It's really, really nice yes, to have you guys. Yes. Thank you. So I can't thank you enough. On behalf of my team and I, thank you for contributing to this. And also the con conversation for everybody. I know there are questions on the dashboard right now, but we won't be able to take it. So you can go to community.techpoint.africa 
to post your question. We will encourage them to come there to answer as well. Community.techpoint.africa. You can post some of your questions, and we will encourage them to post the uh, to answer the question. So thank you, Toby. Oluwa Toby. Thank you, Chris. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. You can go to the backstage now. and you can network right. with them on the VIP session. Sure. They will be sure. there as well. Perfect. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having thank us. You so thank you so much. Thank you, guys. So so Bye. now, guys. Yeah. Thanks. So we are moving to the next session where we will be having uh, it's it's working on global products. They just left. So Christine, the backstage. Can you remember backstage? <laughs> yes. So. The, we just talk about a product on Africa now, like, okay, people that are building product for African continent, how do you build with product? How do you build product for Africa? But the next stage is we are having people that are working on global products. How do you work on global product? How do you think when working on global product, working on a company that is a global company, how do you do that? So that's the next stage we are going now. And is going to be working on a global product. You can join the next session now. It's starting in, it's starting now. So this session, oh, it's starting in five minutes. Uh, okay. Thank you, guys. See you in the next stage. Products.